He has logged more than 100,000 nautical miles, many of those as the captain and owner of the North Star of Herschel Island, an old furs trading ship that helped maintain Canadian sovereignty in the Arctic during the Cold War. Now, our Bruce McDonald is out with a new book, drawing on those many miles at sea, entitled Never Say Pig, the Book of Sailors' Superstitions, and he joins me now. Welcome, Bruce. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, Bruce, the book begins with a great story about the time you almost stirred your tea with a knife. I say almost. Yeah. Someone stopped you. What happened? Oh, I was just uh, a young a young sailor uh, signed on as board a crew of, a, of what we now call a tall ship, a training ship for teenagers, uh, a ship named Pathfinder. And I found myself in the galley all alone, uh, making a cup of tea and in walks the captain, the most feared and respected and revered person aboard and uh, i was just hoping that he would not speak to me i kind of liken it to be if if you've found yourself as the junior assistant to a roadie on the rolling stones tour and mick jagger walked into the lunchroom and you're just praying that he doesn't ask you anything about music uh, because you know nothing um, but anyway we we each poured some water into our cups and uh and passed around the the can of uh, milk, we used to call canned cow, and and then I reached for an implement to stir our respective cups, and unfortunately I picked up a knife, and uh, he he clapped onto my wrist, and then just just roared roared in my ear, you know, stir with a knife, trouble and strife, for you, trying to jinx the whole voyage, and then he left me kind of shaking my boots and. Everybody on board, the 28 crew, just kind of gave me the hairy eyeball for the rest of the day as the guy who just about jinxed the voyage. And uh, that was my first real lesson in how superstitious sailors are. And uh, then I made a life of it and uh, became superstitious myself. So, so this book is really just a collection of um, in all the different ships and boats, vessels I've sailed in various places around the world. Every ship has their own superstitions and nobody tells you what they are, they don't, they, they tell you what the rules of the ship are, but you have to find out by trial and error um, what, what's uh, allowed on board each vessel. And uh, that, that's really just what this collection is. Did you ever think that so many years later you'd be collecting these superstitions in a book or that you'd have enough to make a book out of? Well, no, I knew I, as a lifetime sailor, I know that I carry with me certain superstitions and I was just doing a dock walk here at uh, Vancouver Maritime Museum's Heritage Harbor and one of the boat owners, we just fell into a into a chat, into a gam and he he asked me, I think, I'm not sure how the conversation even came up, but he just asked me what, I think it was about why can't you whistle on a boat and so we had a little chat about that and somebody else joined the conversation and they were asking why fishing boats don't want to have bananas on board and then just really for my own amusement I went and sat back aboard North Star and I just started writing out all the ones that I could remember and I think I got to about a hundred and so I wrote to a bunch of sailors that I knew uh, around the world and said what have I missed here and they added in a few more and and it just turned into a thing um it's I mean there's hundreds there and I, I'm sure that there's thousands more that that I didn't record, but these are basically the ones that I've come across in my career. And why do you think we're so fascinated by these these superstitions? I mean, anywhere you flip in this book, there's great little uh, anecdotes about uh, about superstitions uh, uh, of the nautical variety, and uh, it's really hard to put down. Uh, well, thank you. I found anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, but well, I think that uh, <clears throat> people in all walks of life. Uh, are superstitious whether they they know it or not they all we all carry certain superstitions and they're kind of ingrained in us at a young age um, for sailors i think originally you were sailing literally off into the unknown and uh sea monsters and witches and devils and storms and uh so you're looking for what i call you know sort of the original marine insurance uh so anything that you could do to uh, get get yourself from one port to another safely, uh, you would do. And these just kind of got passed along um, from generation to generation. Uh, much like, you know, with a shore. I mean, if you were to pull out, you know, an umbrella right now inside uh, your room there and put it over your head, 
um, it would probably feel pretty uncomfortable to you or make or anybody watching you think, well, you can't do that. But that goes back to ancient Egypt. That's been passed down from ancient Egypt when it was originally a sun parasol and uh, being inside, you're already not partaking of the bounty of the sun god Ra. Of, uh, uh, now you're putting up a second barrier, so you're insulting this god. And now most of us don't worship the sun god Ra anymore, but we still uh, don't put umbrellas up over our head. Yeah. Do you have a favorite superstition out of all of these in the book? Not sure about a favorite. Um, there's certainly ones that uh, uh, drove my kids crazy uh, growing up on the ship, but uh, ones that I do practice all the time, you know, everything has to be up, uh, standing, you know, right side up on board the ship, you know, from canned goods to buckets so that, you know, the luck doesn't run out. I know that um, one command I had, uh, we were sailing and it was going to be a beautiful voyage. The weather was good. The crew was good. The ship was in really good nick. But I just had this very, very bad feeling right before we left port. Um, and it was only going to be a, a couple of weeks we were going to be out. But I was uh, rattling around some, some change in my pocket. And just on impulse, I just dumped all the change overboard. And we went away and we had a great voyage. And we came back. And from then on, whenever I left on a, on a voyage, I would chuck a coin in and whether or not I was paying a toll to, to Neptune or not, I don't know. But in researching the book, I was kind of happy to see that this has been going on for hundreds of years with, with other people like myself, that you pay, you pay a toll before you leave for, for safe passage. What do you hope the reader gets out of the book? I, I think for the sailors, um, what I'm hoping, um, the hope and dream is that It'll just sort of sit there maybe on the galley shelf when people are having the same kind of conversation that I had on the dock here and they can look it up. And what, what I've, what I've tried to do is do a deep dive on as many of these as I could and find out their origin story. And so it'll just spark conversation. And what I'm hoping is that people will write in their own, write in the margins, um, cross out the ones that don't, that they don't like, and then just pass it on to the next generation. And it just becomes uh, a book that gets passed along. As mm -hmm. part of a great nautical tradition, no doubt. Well, I, I hope so. And, uh, and it's, it's kind of fun. Um, and it, it's interesting, you know, when you do trace back where some of these um, superstitions came from, uh, it just kind of just gives the, them a bit more depth. And uh, there's a reason, there's always just a reason why some of these got started. It's easy to see why some of them got started, yeah. And Bruce, why can't you say pig on board a vessel? Well, like so many of these uh, superstitions, um, so many get traced back to the Holy Bible. Um, and in this one, there was a fellow who is, um, by the side of the Sea of Galilee, and he was consumed by what I guess we would call the devil, but he was consumed by evil. And uh, Jesus came along and he begged Jesus to take the demons from him and point them into uh, a herd of swine, a herd of pig that were on this cliff. And Jesus did this, and the pigs became crazed and threw themselves off and drowned in the, in the Sea of Galilee. So pigs became associated with the devil and just like saying Beetlejuice um, you don't call you don't say the word pig because it's inviting the devil on board mm -hmm. right. don't want to do that the name of the book is never say pig the book of sailor superstitions it's available from harbor publishing my thanks to author r bruce mcdonald thank you